RVDs, hey, batteries, a necessity, a mystery to me. But we're lucky enough here. We have Bill, an ABYC technician at Tidewater Yacht Service, and he's going to go through some of the things on batteries. Now, we're going to do a couple of different videos. This first one, we're going to talk about the types of batteries and what's right for your boat and some of the pluses and minuses with the different ones. Then in the next video we're going to show in general a way to hook them up and we're talking about a 12 volt system here uh, not a 24 or a 6 volt. Um, so there's a little bit of you know wiggle room in there I think I hope. Always a lot of wiggle room. Okay <laughs> all right good good good. So I wanted to start off and just kind of give you an idea of that and then the, uh, later in the year hopefully we're going to have a chance to do something on um, solar and wind power uh, and inverters to talk a little bit about that and some of the things that you need to put all of that together. Like I said, it's all a mystery to me. Uh, you're the guy. So what, what are we going to go over today? Uh, so I think we figure off, we start with what the different types of batteries there are, um, the battery chemistry behind them, uh, kind of pluses or minuses, um, different battery sizes that uh, we'll see commonly on boats, uh, and what some of the nomenclature means uh, when you read a battery label. Okay. All right. Alrighty. All right. Uh, so to start, I guess, uh, why don't we go over battery chemistry. Uh, you know, for the most part, everything that's out there is a lead acid battery. Uh, there are some new things coming on the market, mostly lithium ion, which we'll talk about in a little bit. Uh, but for the most part, what you're seeing on a boat is a lead acid battery. Okay. Um, which means that they've taken lead plates and they've suspended them in an electrolyte of some sort and that's how you generate electric current. Okay. Uh, so the main type we usually see is uh, wet cell batteries. Uh, that's basically lead plates in a bath of, of sulfuric acid. Um, you have to you have to maintain those, so usually you see a little cap on top, you have to fill them, check them with water um, quite often just to make sure they don't get dried out. Alright, I've, I've wondered about that. Mm -hmm. We're adding water to something that's got acid in it. Mm -hmm. How does that? I, I don't. I never understood. So the acid doesn't evaporate out. The water will evaporate out. Oh. So basically, what happens is the water di di disappears. The concentration of the acid gets stronger. Uh, so when we add more water, we're not really diluting it out uh, beyond what it's supposed to be. We're just keeping the overall level electrolyte where it needs to be. Another caveat there: always use distilled water. Um, if you use tap water, it has uh, minerals in it, and that will actually ruin the battery. So what's our next battery? Uh, next type we'll see is gel batteries. Um, that's kind of the same idea except they've added a gelling agent to that sulfuric acid. Uh, so it's now instead of being a nice liquid bath, we have a gel bath, but it's the same overall chemistry more or less. Now do you have to add water to that one? No, those are completely sealed and they're maintenance free. Oh, um, okay. The nice thing about gels is they do tend to have a little bit longer of a life cycle. Um, they're more expensive because of that, but they're also very finicky when it comes to charging them. Uh, you have to make sure you're charging them at the prescribed rates. Uh, usually if you have a battery charger and has a gel setting, you're good. Uh, but you can't, if, you have, if you have an older charger that doesn't have selectable settings, if you take out a flooded, a flooded lead acid and put in a gel battery, you're probably going to destroy the battery. Uh, yeah, so they're, they're very finicky with charging profiles. Uh, the third type we see very often is AGMs. That's kind of a nice middle ground there. Uh, once again, it is a... What's AGM? Um, absorbed glass mat. Okay. So um, in this, instead of having lead plates uh, sitting in an electrolyte bath, uh, they've taken that electrolyte and they've basically, think of a sponge almost. So they have these glass mats that are, have soaked up that electrolyte there and immobilized it. Um, mm. And that's comprising that battery. So it, it, it's sealed, it's maintenance free. You don't add water to those. Um, they can take a wider range of charging profiles, but really should have a battery charger with an AGM setting because they are still a little bit more um, finicky than the wet cells are. Okay. Um, they're going to last about the same as a wet cell, give or take, uh, but they're a little bit more robust in, in how they perform in the boat and the conditions they can tolerate. All right. And now what about the lithium ion? I mean, I hear a lot of stuff about I think that's way over my mm -hmm. head. So lithium ion, uh, the technology's really come, I guess, 
more more full circle now. Um, it's advanced to the point that we feel comfortable putting them in boats. Uh, there's different lithium ion profiles out there or chemistries. Uh, the big one that we see for boats is a very safe and tested um, profile. It's lithium ion phosphate. Uh, it's not the same thing that's in your cell phone that they've been blowing up on the airplanes uh, and all those different ones. So it's a very, very safe, reliable, um, reliable chemistry in those things. Uh, the big, big difference between lithium ion and lead acids is longevity. Um, if you are getting two to three years out of a wet cell battery, you can easily see 10, 15 plus years out of a lithium ion. Wow. Uh, they're going to. Let me have, I know I had it in here somewhere, a uh, number of charge cycles they will take. Um, yeah, you can easily see upwards of 10,000 to 15,000 charge cycles with a single uh, 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 lithium ion bank. So once you put it in, if they're much more expensive up front, but once they're in the boat, you may never change those batteries out again. Wow. Um, the other really nice thing about lead at, or the lithium ions is they don't care about their state of charge. Uh, with a lead acid battery, in order to get the maximum longevity out of your battery, every time you take it down, you need to charge it all the way back to full. Okay. Um, if you spend a lot of time in the middle there, that will hurt the battery. It'll actually de degrade much faster. So if you're go going out, you just plug in for an hour at lunch, unplug again and leave, you're actually hurting your battery. Um, if you go out, you use the battery, but you don't plug the boat right back in, in when you get back and it stays at, you know, 60, 70% charge for a couple days or even a couple weeks, that's bad for the battery. Hmm. I'll let the ion doesn't care. You can, right. you can charge it for 10 minutes. You can charge it for four hours. Uh, you can leave it all the way de you know, depleted for weeks. It's not going to care. It's all not right. state of charge depend or it's very very tolerant to state of, you know, uh, partial state of charge. All right, now how, in, in a little bit guys, we're gonna go out in the shop here and we're gonna look at some different batteries and see the different sizes and so forth. But um, how do we determine, like mainly the house bank, I guess, and mm -hmm. the cranky one, how do we determine what is the right size battery? Is it amps? I mean, you know, I, I, how do we know what batteries we need? Uh, so when you talk about battery sizes, um, really it's, they're, they call them case sizes, so it's a standard case size. There's a group 24, 27, and 31s are what we usually see in the smaller boats. And that's the size of the battery? Correct, yep. Okay. Uh, the, the chemistry behind it will determine things like the cranking amps of the battery, the reserve capacity, the amp hours of those. Uh, but still, even within the, those groups, a group 31 kind of sits in this range, or group 27 sits in this range. Okay, because uh, so they are the different. More important thing, yep. and that's so I guess size is important so yep. that it can fit somewhere. But what's more, the, the amps, the cranking, the longevity, how? How does that come along? Uh, all depends on a, the, the use of the battery. Uh, for instance, if you have the batteries being used to start your engine, the most important uh, parameter that you're concerned about is the cranking amps. This, this cold cranking amps or the marine cranking amps. Uh, the only difference between those two is the test temperature that, that the battery's at when they test it. Okay. Uh, cold cranking amps, they measure how many amps that thing puts out at zero degrees. Marine cranking amps, they measure how many it puts out at 32 degrees. Uh, oh. And the warmer the battery, the more amperage it puts out. So okay. that's the only difference between those two tests. Right. Uh, they say marine cranking amps because they figure you're not going to be boating in zero degree weather, so why, why care about it? That's not all. <laughs> <laughs> I'll be inside. <laughs> so will my wife. Okay, yep. uh, so then on the house side of mm -hmm. things, you know, to run um, the autopilot and all of those other things that are DC motivated uh, mm -hmm. lights and so forth. How do we determine, or what is the number that we're trying to get to? So with, yeah, I, yeah. I don't know what. So when you talk about, about house batteries, we're talking about a small or a relatively small draw over a long period of time. Right, uh, right. Cranking amps, it's, you, you hit that, that st uh, a starter hard for a couple of uh, seconds and that's it. Uh, house battery, we have a, 
long, prolonged draw, and we're trying to operate the boat for as long as we can before we have to recharge the, ba the, right. the battery. Um, so a couple ways to do that, um, when we look at it from an ABYC perspective, what we're really concerned with is the reserve capacity, and that's if you lost all of your charging systems, we want to make sure that the critical systems of the boat can operate for an hour and a half. So your VHF radio, your bilge pumps, uh, navigation equipment, those things so that you can hopefully get rescued before you run out of battery completely. Okay. Uh, cruisers are more concerned about overall um, their, 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 their refrigeration uh, draws, um, you know, lighting, all those things so that you can be at anchor all night and not have to run your generator or engine to charge your batteries back up. Uh, that's more of a personal preference there. Uh, obviously the more amp hours you have in your battery bank, the longer you're going to be able to run that run your loads without uh, without having to charge. Okay. Yep. Well, how do you figure out what your amp hours are? So ABYC, I'll pull out the Bible here. All right, ABYC stands for American Boating Yachting Council? The American Boat and Yacht Council. Okay. Right. So they write the standards that boats um, should be built to. Um, it's not like the National Electric Code where it's mandated by law, uh, but it is becoming more and more mandated by insurance companies. Okay. Uh, um, and if you're, um, and it's, it's also recognized in the legal world too, so if you don't do something to ABYC standards and there's an issue, you, you'll then probably be in trouble in a courtroom. Okay. Right. Uh, but it's not a legal, legal standard okay. yet. All right. Yep. Um, so when we talk about amp hours here, uh, they have a nice little chart, which uh, if you go to ABYC, um, it is a paid subscription for these things, uh, but they may help you out as an individual, okay. individual boater or your mechanic or, or electrician should have access to these as well. Um, so what we're concerned here is this column A, which is the most, is the critical loads over here. So your navigation lights, your bilge blowers, your bilge pumps, uh, your biggest radio, uh, we'll look, talk about transmit power, uh, not receive. Mm -hmm. Uh, things like your radar, your instruments, um, and your electronics, all the things that are going to run all the time and be important to the vessel. So you, you would add up all of the amps that those, those, mm -hmm. those loads pull. Um, then we would come over to your, so, you know, let's say that uh, all said and done, these loads are going to be 25 amps. Okay. All right. Uh, so we take that over to their nice little reserve capacity here. So 25, if that, those loads from that table were 25 amps, we're looking at um, 90 minutes of reserve capacity. Okay. okay. Now I do have a worksheet, guys, that I'll put on, our, on my website that you can download. It's kind of a, I took it from several different sources and put mm -hmm. it together to kind of help you figure out these amps. It gives you a, a, a general idea, but you really need to look at the handbook to see what the amps are for, for the different things? Correct. Okay, all right. Yeah, the so owner's manual know. should tell you exactly what its power requirements are and how much it's drawing. Okay, all right. So let's say that, all right, we're, I'm just looking at the book here and I'm seeing amps up to 75, 80, 80. All right, so let's say that I need 75 amps. How many batteries do I need? Well, let's look at a couple. So these are a chart here from DECA batteries. Uh, we use DECA pretty, pretty re regularly here as a more or less house battery. Um, so let's see, here we have a Group 31 AGM, and we're gonna look at the reserve capacity of this. So one Group 31 AGM DECA battery has a reserve capacity of 190 minutes. Okay. Uh, so if we were talking about uh, you want to pick one of these? Yeah, let's pick 85 here. All right. I'm going to do 80 because that's okay, a nice, that's easier 80. number. Okay, that's easy. Oh, wait, wait I'm, I'm sorry. 80, you're right. 400 is 85. Okay. Yep. So that's almost 200 amp hours of battery. So we're looking at, it would be three batteries to meet that. Um, so you would need three how? I mean, that's, yeah. that's kind of a high number though, isn't it? I would I say mean, so. Maybe you're running your air conditioner or something through it. I, I don't know. But for your basic... Yeah stuff what how many amps do uh, you think of like a, a say a basic sailboat um, the radar yeah. and um radio uh, autopilot it's hard to tell without you know, figuring out exactly how you use the okay. boat um if you're motoring mostly you don't need a giant right. you know, right. gi you know, giant ba battery bank if you're trying to be off the grid completely yeah. we're going to put more in there and a lot of times with sailboats especially we're more limited with where we can put the batteries 
So oh. it'd be nice to have seven batteries in your bank and run for two, three, three days, but if you only fit two, that's really the yeah, yeah, the, <laughs> the, the realistic limit of the vessel. Okay, yeah. all right. Well, we're, let's, let's go take a look at the batteries themselves. Mm -hmm. hey, all right, mateys, now we're gonna take a look at actual battery sizes and what some of the differences are. Uh, so when we're talking about uh, batteries, we usually start off with the case size, which is the physical dimensions of the battery. Um, first one here is we have a group 24 battery, uh, a little bit larger, you move up to the group 27, and then a little bit larger to the group 31. Uh, then we do have a 8D here as well, which is uh, usually about the biggest we're gonna see in a marine setting. Um, when we move up in case size, we also move up in capacity of the battery. Uh, so just give a little comparison between these two. Uh, this group 24 battery um, has a capacity of 65 amp hours. Uh, this group 27 has a capacity of 90 amp hours. The group 31 has a capacity of 105 amp hours. And this 8D has a capacity of 300 amp hours. Um, wow. Yeah, so the bigger you get, the more cells within it, uh, the more capacity that, that battery has. Uh, then we talk about the different types of batteries. Uh, this one here happens to be a maintenance-free, but it's still a flooded lead-acid battery. Um, this is usually what you see in your car where you don't have to add water to it, uh, but it's still a, it's still a bath of, of electrolyte with lead plates suspended in it. Uh, these two are maintainable batteries. Uh, so I'll give you a quick little demonstration of how to check for those. All right, so we're gonna go ahead and, and uh, do some maintenance on these, uh, just or show you how to check the, the electrolyte level in these. Uh, first thing we're gonna do, make sure you have some eye protection. You don't want that splashing up in your eyes. That's not a fun thing. Um, we're gonna look for some some caps. Uh, for instance, when th this one happens to be these pry off caps. On this one over here, um, one thing to be careful with these, it does say right here, maintenance accessible battery. Um, tells you to pull this sticker off and under this sticker, there's little caps that just have a screwdriver to open them up. Uh, a lot of people miss that, but these need to be checked just as often as these ones. Uh, so to open this, you can just get a little screwdriver underneath of it. Pry it up. And we should be able to look down inside of here and check the electrolyte level. Now, uh, how full should that be? I mean, we can't see it in the camera, but how full yeah. should that level be? Um, you basically want it to be above the plates, absolutely. If the electrolyte level ever drips, dips below the level of the plates in there, that will ruin the battery. Uh, so always keep it above there. Uh, you don't want it to be all the way to the top because when it uh, starts charging, it'll leak out of the battery. Uh, so usually right about to the bottom of the fill holes there, uh, you'll see they go down a bit. If you put it right to the bottom of those that fill hole, you're good to go. Uh, in our next series, uh, we're gonna talk about wiring some of this stuff up. All righty. All right, Bill, thanks very much. My pleasure. All right, see you in the next one. All right. Okay.